And, uh, and finally, in German, of course, in German, uh, they have a, a word called the uh, Zielschmerz, which is the dread of getting what you want. <laughs> of finally fulfilling a lifelong dream. I'm German myself, so I know exactly what that feels like. Now, I, I'm not sure if I would use any of these words as I go about my day, but I'm really glad they exist. But the only reason they exist is because I made them up. Um, I am the author of The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, uh, which I've been writing for the last seven years. And it, the whole mission of the project is to sort of find holes in, in the language of emotion and try to fill them so that we have a way of talking about all those human peccadilloes and quirks of the human condition that, um, that we all feel but may not think to talk about because we don't have the words to do it. Halfway through this project, um, I uh, defined Sonder, the idea that we all think of ourselves as the main character and everyone else is just extras. Um, but in reality, we're all the main character. And you yourself are an extra in someone else's story. Um, and so as soon as I, I published that, um, I got a lot of response from people saying, thank you for giving voice to something that I had felt all my life, but I I, there was no word for that, so it made them feel less alone. I think that's the power of words, uh, to make us feel less alone. And it was not, not long after that that I started to notice Saunder being used earnestly in conversations online. Uh, and not long after that that I actually noticed it, I, I caught it next to me in an actual conversation in person. There is no stranger feeling than making up a word and then seeing it take on a... <laughs> mind of its own. I don't have a word for that yet, but I will. <laughs> I'm working on it. Um... This is Amelia, your smart entertainment host, and today we are exploring the realm of unknown emotions. On a daily basis, we feel emotions like happiness, sadness, fear and anger, but besides our own perceived limits, nothing stops us from inventing or discovering new ones. If you were to acknowledge the existence of a new emotion, what would you call it and what would be its manifestation? The human emotions are directly connected with the human wants. The positive emotions speak about our alignment or even achievement of goals. Life's how it should be. On the other hand, the negative emotions indicate a loss of or a deviation from what we want. Our life is not close to and it's not headed towards its goals.
Therefore, the human emotions, including the so-called negative ones, have an adaptive role of guiding the behavior. It is a system similar to the physiological one that guides us towards whatever produces pleasure and to avoid whatever produces pain. But the human affective system is more complex than that. Being able to guide us towards things that produce pain in a short run, and pleasure in a long run, like work and sacrifice. Nothing stops us from acknowledging and inventing new emotions, even though they might be just slightly different from those we already know, since the emotions that we really need in order to assess a situation in terms of opportunity or danger are already well defined. Sadness, the loss emotion. Fear, the threat emotion. Anger, the fight emotion. Happiness, the accomplishment emotion. Aside from these basic emotions, and aside from the nuances resulted from their combination, anguish, resignation, hope, resentment, etc., new emotions born even today, having maybe a limited adaptive character but disclosing a rich and enviable creativity. As you see, the human creativity knows no limits and, even though the adaptive value of these emotions is a vague one, you can't fail to appreciate the refined minds that experiencing them first give them a name and cherish these emotional products. Did you ever experience an unknown emotion? How would you define it? What name would you give it and what would be its behavioral manifestation?